Hello, uh, I want to talk today about buying property with none of your own money. Um, how about I expand that in, in a bit more? Um, uh, get into property with, um, with, with the, the, the smallest amount of funds possible. Let, let's put it like that. Uh, back in 2000 and, well, four, five, six, any of those years, um, it was possible to, uh, and I regularly did it, a no money down deal. So you, we would buy a house, um, and the very same day that we bought it, we'd refinance it. Actually, I wrote down here the um, the very first property deal that I ever did. Um, we bought it for £72,000, spent £2,000 on the renovation. So basically exploded a can of paint in there and cleaned the carpets. Um, and we had an end valuation of £115,000. To achieve that, some of the little tricks we did, um, the estate agent that we were buying the property from uh, took their board off of the house, delisted it from um, from right move. Well, this was not me doing it. This is them doing some standard industry practice back then. Uh, I sent my remortgage survey around there before I'd even bought the thing. They wouldn't know, never even asked whether I owned it or not. I just got a valuation on a remortgage so that my mortgage to remortgage uh, was lined up before I'd even purchased it. Buy it, remortgage it, pull all your money back out. If you do the maths on there, it's over £20,000 worth of cash back. I got an 85% loan to value loan, and, and that was in 2004. Um, I know you dearly love to do that. Um, I think once you learn a little bit more, I think you might be a little bit sceptical. Hopefully you're already a little bit sceptical. But the problem, or maybe the relief, is that you can't do that. There are some very good reasons why you shouldn't do that, but there are some rules that have been put in place since that to stop you doing that. Um, I want you to feel good about that by the end of this video. Uh, I know that when I had built up a property portfolio very quickly at that period, you can see how that would happen, um, I reinvested those £20,000 as in more houses. Really, really glad I did. I know that some people didn't spend that money and that's where the problem came. But even so, I felt like I needed to buy at least one house for extra, proper, done in the right way, the way that I'm, I, I would talk about doing it now to compensate for each one of those that I bought in a very aggressive way. Um, you know, some of these properties didn't make money every month. So I built up, maybe bought 10 of them and they're losing a thousand pounds or so a month. And you look at your 20,000 pounds in the bank and think, well, that'll last quite a long time. It runs out pretty quick, especially if a boiler starts breaking here and there, those kind of things, you know. Um, so the reasons you can't do it, there's no same day refinancing anymore. Loan to values are much, much lower. Valuers are much more conservative. There's this thing called the Prudential Regulation Authority, which is a pretty smart move. Essentially means you can't buy a buy-to-let property with a mortgage um, anymore. You know, a, a bad buy-to-let mortgage. <laughs> can't, you can buy a buy-to-let mortgage. You can't buy a bad deal. It just doesn't stack. You know, you look at the, the, the rules. So essentially, there's a stress test in there, probably 5% um, rent cover. Uh, sorry, 125% rent cover, about 5% payable, even if you're not paying 5%. Look at the, the Prudential uh, Regulation Authority rules. Um, and you'll see it's very hard to buy a buy-to-let property the wrong way if you stick to those rules. So, you know, all these things have been coming in. And I think people can see why it was a, a, a bad idea. You know, amateurs getting their name on title deeds, um, not really wanting to be landlords particularly, just that get-rich-quick um scheme almost you know you put your name on the title deeds you pull out all the money you got twenty thousand pounds not really bothered about the tenant or the house or any of those things um your property is losing you every money month every money so actually those keys you're hanging on to do you just want to hand those back and keep the 20 grand i bought an entire street this was in 2010 by the time it all washed it washed its way through where the landlady had done exactly that bought the entire street cashed out £20,000 per property, they were new built, and uh, disappeared. Well, bad for the banks, bad for the tenants. Good for me, I'll pick them all up for, for, for a song. Um, I, I guess you can kind of see why the buy-to-let scene has had more regulation since then, it's no bad thing. There is a problem, uh, and I think the, this is what I wanted to address today. The problem is it's detrimental to you achieving your goals. Um, because there are still people out there and companies out there um, who are either inadvertently or on purpose telling you that you can still do either that or very close to that. And it's nearly always in pursuit of selling you a course or 
or some kind of education programme. Uh, and I think overselling that is getting in the way of lots of people actually achieving something that might sound a lot more modest, but is totally achievable and you can do it. And once you've done a little bit, it's building blocks and actually you can get the big, the big dream, maybe in a slightly longer time, yeah, it won't happen overnight, it might happen over five or 10 years, but you can do it. Um, I think it's demotivating and demoralizing to hear this constant pitch of what's possible and what other people are doing when clearly and blatantly it isn't. Uh, I'll tell you right now, last year we bought over 100 houses, not one of them was no money down. Uh, on average, we leave in between five and 15,000 pounds in any single let deal at 70 to 75% loan to value. Of course, if you've got 85% loan to value, it will be a different story. Um, and I think if you think about that, and think about the maths involved, this money in or money out thing, it's a bit of financial smoke and mirrors at the end, isn't it? The house that you might have bought could be the same, the renovation could be the same, the valuation could be the same, but the loan to value will make a massive difference there. So um, yeah, just, just bear that in mind, you know, when you're assessing a deal. So we run a monthly discovery call. I'm just trying to give you a bit of an insight into um, the scene, the, uh, the, the, the no money down scene. Um, because one of the questions we get asked, um, and, and I suspect that some of the people that come on our course will have been exposed to this no money down scheme. So one of the questions we get asked is, can we, as a company, forthelandlords.com, keep up with demand? Can we buy enough properties to service the people that want to buy the properties? And it's a nice, as soon as somebody says that, you can see that they're thinking about well, joining us, great. But their biggest concern is, this is great, it sounds really good. Can I get enough of it? You know, that, that's their question. Uh, and, and my answer, our answer, the team's answer, pretty much always surprises them. The answer is no, of course we can't keep up with demand. No way. Um, there are far, far more people who want to buy buy to let than can. Um, it, it's as simple as that. There's a reason that there are only a dozen or so people on a discovery day call. We match the number of property we can find. That's a pretty finite amount. Take some off because I want to buy some. The rest of the team, we, we, we buy our houses ourselves. Um, and the rest of them, that's we match the people we meet to that. Um, finding clients isn't the hard bit. Finding the houses is the hard bit. Again, that's a little bit of a clue as to why it might be easier to sell a, sell a training course as opposed to actually roll your sleeves up and get your hands dirty. Finding people who want to invest in buy-to-let is easy, if that's true. Finding people who want to invest in buy-to-let with less effort, who wouldn't, and less money is a lot, lot easier. So if you can turn up the dream, you'll sell more. It's as simple as that. If you can think of a catchy title uh, and market it through social media, sell that dream, you will put thousands of people in a room probably. Um, you know, maybe, maybe a thousand people paying you a hundred pounds or maybe a hundred people paying you 10,000 pounds. And you know that that's possible as well. So a couple of things to relay from somebody looking in. So we are not in this industry clearly, but I know that some of our clients have sort of had a look around at that industry. Um, when we share the pages of a magazine or when we go to a trade show or a, 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 a participate in a webinar, those people are around. So I get to see and I get to speak to people and, and, and I know, but first of all, if they told you the truth in the advertising, less people would buy. Most importantly, if they told you the truth at the training course, less people will be satisfied. Building a buy to let property portfolio is not fun, fun, fun all the time, it just isn't. Um, it's worthwhile, talked a lot about that. Um, it's, it's very re rewarding, but selling the nuts and bolts of it it's not a sexy proposition and people simply do not buy it as well as selling the dream. Um, selling the dream does work for the trading firm, um, but for you, it puts you on a horse you can't ride because their um, satisfaction, the, the training course's satisfaction goes up, the more fun the course is. The fact that when you get out into the big wide world, you can't quite do it, that's you, your fault and uh, you haven't managed to achieve and that's down to you, not down to them. Um, I spoke to many trainers at these courses and, and um, you know, the conversations, I suppose they were quite shocking to some people, but um, I, I was kind of having a little bit of a dig when I said some, something along the lines of, so, you know, what, what's, the, uh, what's the average percentage of people who do absolutely nothing with these courses? It must be sort of high 90s. Deadpan look, reply back, no, it's 99.9%. .9%. 
do nothing with it whatsoever. And this is a person that stood in front of a, it's one of the biggest training companies in the, in the UK, stood in front of a hall full of hundreds of people trying to sell them courses. And then they'll sell a course and then they'll be in a room full of 50 to 100 people and they'll have paid a good chunk of money and he knows that 99.9% .9 of those people will do nothing with it at all. I'll give you a little insight into something else as well. It's, a, it's um, yeah. There's a chap out there who sells, um, he sells the training for the trainers. So this 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 guy's he's very good. I have to say, very good. I, I believe he works with politicians and uh, uh, and leaders of industry to craft stump speeches and pitches that that work. He can craft a, a pitch that will have people literally running from the back of the room to, to, to buy something or virtually clicking to buy something. And uh, you can go on a training course with him and he will teach you how to deliver it and also how to um, uh, devise that pitch. And uh, the same chap also runs a training on how to run a hypnotism show, you know, in, a, in an auditorium. And it was just a really, he was speaking to me, telling me, this is something else he does. He's a training business. He trains several different things, you know, speeches, how to do the pitch, how to run a hypnotism show, same thing. Um, you've got a thousand people in an auditorium and it's something very simple, do something, something. And then there's cameras on that, that auditorium and they'll watch some people, you know, out of a thousand people, 500 are reasonably receptive. And there's something else that happens. And out of that, you end up with 50 people on the stage. You'll have seen these, these shows and then the next half an hour of the show is gradually whittling those 50 people down to 25, 10, 5. The very last one is where there's three people on a stool and the guy says, you know, bark like a dog or whatever. The person that stands up, looks left, looks right, checks that they're not going to be made a fool of, that's not your person. The person that bolts out of the chair and barks like a dog. That's your person. And that's the person that gets hypnotised at the end of the show. And that funnel is how they sell a property education course. So, um, I'm not saying all courses are bad. Um, and this could be a little bit of a depressing uh, <laughs> a video. I, I appreciate that. But I thought it was, it was definitely um, worthwhile, responsible maybe, uh, pointing out some of the, the, the tricks of the trade and I want to leave on a, on a, on a more positive note. Um, there are some good training courses out there. And as long as you don't get sucked into that funnel um, or you, you stay aware of it, then I think that you can definitely go into a, a, a number of sort of reasonably um, free or low price courses. You're going to pick up some stuff. Um, there are some good training courses out there. So I, I, I think. The great news is this isn't as tricky as those training courses make it out to be. Uh, there's, a, there's a difference between simple and easy, isn't there? Um, most of the things you need to know are relatively simple, if not easy. So you can watch a video on YouTube and learn how to, or have a very good idea how to do this in 20 minutes or half an hour. And um, that's simple. Yeah? then you need to go out in the big wide world and do it, but that isn't easy. And that's the only difference. So if you've got the determination to actually push through and do it, simply, you can do it. You don't need all that um, uh, ex expensive education courses, you just don't. Um, if you're the right kind of person who sees through that get rich quick scheme um, and settles yourself down to the uh, doing things right, doing things the right way, finding a, a, finding a cheap house, buying it with a margin, doing it up, renting out so it makes a monthly profit every month. I recorded a whole series on how to build a buy-to-let property empire. Um, I'll put a link into the video, you'll be able to click on it. There, there's a starter, but you know the whole internet is full of um, those kind of things as well. Don't spend too long watching them, get out there in the big wild world and, and do something as well. Uh, if standing on the sidelines watching um, YouTube videos uh, it, it will only get you so far. Maybe you'll get you all the way. I don't know, but uh, yeah, for most people, they need a little bit more. Uh, consider booking out onto one of our discovery calls. We've got a discovery call, discovery day, whatever the session is. Um, go onto our website. We'll put a link in this video as well, and there'll be one in the description. Book on. Um, I know the eighty percent of the people come on those calls, and it's absolutely fine. Um, come there to find that information. 
um, pump us for information. They've got no intention of ever working with us as a company. That's absolutely fine. They have have a good time. Uh, they they work out their questions. Some of them actually had no intention of working with us and decide that they <laughs> afterwards they do, or at least they'll talk about us in a in a nice way to their family and friends. And some of them might become our clients as well. So it's a it's a no obligation, no high high pressure pitch kind of day. Just come along a couple of hours on a, on a Zoom call or whatever it is, and um, you get the majority of your questions answered. Keep coming back if you like. Um, whatever it is, uh, just do something real and don't get sold the pipe dream.